Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. When it comes to talking about the universe, I'm not usually at a loss for words. But every so often, I see something so awe-inspiring and unusual that words don't do it justice. And it seems that when I posted an image of this last year, it looks like I'm not alone here. Such is the case with noctilucent clouds, a strange and beautiful phenomenon that occurs high in the Earth's mesosphere and requires a unique set of conditions to form. In fact, these cloud formations are so captivating that they've inspired communities of watchers who share atmospheric data online in the hope of seeing one for themselves. So, what are noctilucent clouds? What gives them their ghostly luminescence? And what surprising insights can they offer, not just about Earth's atmosphere, but perhaps the future of our planet? I'm Alex McHolgan, and you're watching Astrum. Join me today as we view spectacular images of these eerily beautiful cloud formations, learn how they form, and understand why they are giving scientists a surprising window into Earth's changing atmosphere. Imagine a clear summer night. The sun has dipped below the horizon, and Capella is shining brightly to the north. Suddenly, a bright streak erupts low in the northern sky. It might look like a shining silver thread, or perhaps an icy blue whirl. Slowly, the streaks get brighter and clearer, until finally, the whole sky glistens with a patchwork of eerily shining clouds. Night shining clouds such as this formation, photographed over the Baltic Sea, are truly spectacular. And no, they don't actually emit light. They get their glowing appearance by reflecting solar radiation during astronomical twilight, when the sun is between 6 and 16 degrees below Earth's horizon and remnant light is scattered in the upper atmosphere. Because noctilucent clouds form at very high altitudes, around 76 to 85 kilometers above the terrestrial surface, they can reflect the sun long after an observer has fallen into Earth's shadow. So, while noctilucent clouds also form during daylight hours, they are only visible to the unaided eye at night. To make a noctilucent cloud, you need water, dust particles, and incredibly low temperatures. Unlike normal clouds, which form in the Earth's troposphere, where 75% of the atmosphere's mass and 99% of its water vapor occurs, noctilucent clouds form high in the upper mesosphere, which is the atmosphere's third layer above the stratosphere. Just a reminder, the lowest layer of atmosphere on the Earth is the troposphere, the boundary of which is the tropopause, then the stratosphere, stratopause, mesosphere, mesopause, thermosphere, thermopause, and then finally the exosphere. For more about all these layers, check out this video. The mesosphere is a tricky region to study, since it's too high for spacecraft to fly and too low for orbital spacecraft due to atmospheric drag. Noctilucent clouds form slightly below the mesopause, which is the upper boundary between the mesosphere and the thermosphere. The mesopause is also the coldest region of Earth, with temperatures that can plummet below 100 degrees Celsius. By comparison, the coldest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica was minus 89.6 degrees Celsius. These frigid conditions produce tiny ice crystals less than 100 nanometers in diameter, which then gather on dust particles. Researchers have learned that the mesosphere must reach minus 120 degrees Celsius for these ice crystals to form. That's pretty cold. But if noctilucent clouds require such cold conditions, why do they occur during summer? Well, one unusual property of the mesopause is that it is colder in summer than in winter. Known as the mesopause anomaly, this happens because hot air in the lower troposphere expands, resulting in upswelling gases that decompress in the mesosphere, causing adiabatic cooling. Because noctilucent clouds require very low temperatures, they only appear for 60 to 80 days out of the year, peaking around 20 days after the solstice. If you want to see a night shining cloud formation, you'll need a lookout spot between plus or minus 
50 and 70 degrees latitude. Although satellites have spotted many mesospheric clouds north of the 70th parallel, here on Earth, the polar regions have too much ambient light during the summer for optimal viewing. So if you happen to live in northern Norway or Alaska, you'll have to travel south for your noctilucent cloud watching. That's a pretty good survey of what we know, so let's talk about what we don't. Saying the mesosphere is a very dry place would be a bit of an understatement. In fact, it is one million times drier than air from the Sahara Desert. Not exactly a place you'd expect to find clouds. We currently think upswelling air from the troposphere is the likely cause of this moisture. More puzzling, however, is the question of where the dust is coming from. One theory is that it comes from space in the form of debris. The Earth gets bombarded daily with thousands of meteorites and other space debris. Could they leave enough dust to create such massive cloud formations? Or could there be other causes? Interestingly, noctilucent clouds were first sighted in 1895, two years after Krakatoa's massive volcanic eruption in Indonesia, which spewed debris into the upper atmosphere. It has to be something big like this, because otherwise the atmospheric layers don't mix very much, and so dust wouldn't usually make it to the mesosphere. We also know that man-made sources, such as exhaust from space shuttles, can sometimes trigger noctilucent clouds, such as a 2014 incident when the SpaceX Falcon 9 caused noctilucent clouds over Orlando, Florida. In 2009, the United States Naval Research Laboratory successfully created an artificial noctilucent cloud using exhaust particles from a suborbital sounding rocket. And in 2018, the University of Alaska created a noctilucent cloud by releasing water from a suborbital rocket. But without such proximate causes, the source isn't easy to pinpoint. Luckily, NASA has launched a satellite, known as the Aeronomy of Ice in the Mesosphere, or AIM, to answer these and other pressing questions. It was first launched in 2007, but as of 2022, is still operational. AIM is powered by two solar panels and is equipped with three payload instruments. The Cosmic Dust Experiment, which emits pulses to measure speeding dust particles. The cloud imaging and particle size has four cameras that image mesospheric clouds from variable angles to create a detailed 2D panoramic view. And the Solar Occultation for Ice Experiment, which measures particles, temperature, and atmospheric gases in order to identify chemicals and conditions for noctilucent cloud formation. There have also been several experiments to synchronize AIM's observations with those of low-flying aircraft, the first of which was conducted in July 2009. By synchronizing data between satellites and aircraft, scientists can construct far more detailed models of mesospheric cloud formation and their features than they could from AIM alone. For NASA and other atmospheric researchers, answering these questions is no idle matter. The mesosphere is a remarkably sensitive indicator of changes that are happening elsewhere in the atmosphere. The same features that make it so unusual, its rarefied gases and sensitivity to changes far down in the troposphere, make it a useful canary in the coal mine, so to speak. Decades of noctilucent cloud study have made it clear that they are becoming more frequent, and climate researchers are now beginning to link changes in noctilucent cloud distribution to global climate change. As the troposphere gets hotter, the mesosphere, vis-a-vis -vis the mesopause anomaly, may well be getting cooler. And improving our understanding of the mesosphere has other, far-reaching implications as well. It is a vital part of the atmosphere for re-entering spacecraft, and because the mesosphere is so dry and low density, studying it could help us learn about atmospheres on other planets, such as Mars. By deepening our knowledge of the mesosphere, Researchers hope not only to understand the properties of noctilucent clouds, but also Earth's atmosphere as a whole and how it is changing over time. So there we have it, almost everything you could want to know about noctilucent clouds and what these eerily beautiful formations can tell us about the inner workings of our atmosphere. I hope I earned your like and subscription today. Have you ever seen noctilucent clouds before? Share your experiences in the comments below. 
Talking of clouds, have you ever worried about transmitting data to the cloud? When you connect to a public Wi-Fi, such as in an airport or a restaurant, you are potentially revealing your passwords, financial information and more to a hacker. These are called man-in-the-middle attacks, a hallmark of cybercrime. But luckily there's something you can do about it. NordVPN hides all information that passes between your device and a public network, meaning it cannot be seen by a hacker and you are kept 100% safe. I particularly like their new threat protection feature, which goes a step further than hiding your activity and actively identifies malware-ridden files, prevents you from landing on scam websites and gets rid of irritating ads and trackers. Their product has great reviews and their servers are super fast, but importantly, NordVPN is really essential to your security online. So click the link nordvpn.com forward slash astrum in the description and get a two year plan plus one month for free. Click nordvpn.com forward slash astrum and enjoy a 30 day money back guarantee. It's worth having a look. Thanks for watching. Want more weird atmospheric phenomena? Check out the playlist here. And thanks to those of you that support the channel in whatever way that may be, be it liking, commenting, sharing, or being a patron or a member. If you want to support this way too, check the links in the description below. All the best and see you next time.